All right, I'm going to be talking about the um, To Be or Not To Be soliloquy. Now, this is a gorgeous piece of writing uh, that gets at themes uh, that we all as humans uh, have thought about in one way or the other. So let's just start off by kind of reading a few lines and then talking about it. To be or not to be, that is the question, whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. So let's just take this first chunk. Hamlet's asking, uh, he's thinking about suicide as he's uh, kind of introduced before. So he's saying to be or not to be, should I be here or should I kind of quit it? Is it bad enough that I should just stop? That is the sort of central question to life. That's what that means. That is the question. Whether it is nobler uh, and like better uh, to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. So this is suffering to deal with uh, kind of tumult of life or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. So this sea of troubles that he's talking about are the troubles that are kind of afflicting him. And he's talking about taking arms against himself and thereby ending them. So if you do that, he says, then he kind of continues thinking about it, to die, to sleep no more. So you'll never go back to bed if you kill yourself. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. So uh, by sleeping permanently, we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. That's something that would be... Great, to end the suffering, right? So that's a really good thing. And then he reconsiders the idea. He talks to die, to sleep, and then he changes here. He realizes that's not really the end of it. We don't know what happens afterwards. So death is sort of like a sleep. And then he says to sleep, perchance to dream. And that's the turn right here. He talks about the afterlife. So what, what comes next is important to consider, he says. Aye, there's the rub. That's important. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. So what is a mortal coil? Well, that's literally the, um, the shell of mortality. So as we leave our physical bodies, we have like when, when we make that transition to the next world, what comes next after death, what dreams may come after death, have to give us like have to make us hesitate. And thinking about this, there's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. So that's why everybody is willing to just kind of uh, stay around so long because of that unanswerable question. And then he kind of goes into expands upon that idea. So for who would f bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong. So he's talking here about all of the things that kind of are difficult in life and saying, why would anybody tolerate this stuff? And so he says, uh, for who would bear all this stuff but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, the afterlife, from whose born no traveler returns, puzzles the will. So who would bear all this suffering except for the fact that the dre they dread something after death uh, <clears throat> and it confuses or puzzles the will. It makes us... Uh, hesitate and makes us rather bear those ills deal with what uh you know this our, our current situation than fly to others that we know not of so he's like better the you know the demon that you know than the the demon that you don't thus conscience or thinking does make cowards of us all so it makes us the our ability to consider these possibilities makes us hesitate and makes us cowards <clears throat> and thus he says, the native hue of resolution, so our ability to be resolved in our actions, that ability is made sick or pale, uh, sickly. Uh, it's kind of, you know, made into a sickly form rather than some sort of stern resolution with the pale cast of thought. So the thought casts kind of a pale light over our ability to resolve ourselves towards action. And he says, enterprises... Uh, so things like actions of great pith and moment, great actions, uh, because of this, their currents turn awry or they get screwed up and lose the name of action. And then he just sees Ophelia come in, and this is a beautiful little line. You know, soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy orisons, uh, in thy prayers. So she seems to be praying, I believe. 
be all my sins remembered. So he's considered the afterlife and he ends by thinking about the love of his life, who's praying and uh, nymph-like, and he says that she will be all of his sins remembered. So to some extent, it's like he may be worried that some of the things he has done with Ophelia might affect his position in the afterlife. Anyway, so that's um, a little explanation of what's going on in the to be or not to be soliloquy.